no matter where you are in your creative hustle, you're a rookie or a seasoned vet, there's always a next level we can unlock. You and I are far more than petty people pursuing popularity with pretty polished posts on Instagram. We're so much more than that. We can make an impact on this world, not only with our work, but more importantly, our story and voice. What's going on? You're listening to episode 100 of the Perspective Podcast, and I'm your host, Scotty Russell of Perspective Collective. This show is fuel for your mind and creative grind. My guests and I provide the tools to find your voice, overcome adversity, and make an impact with your work. And I'm all about building community here, so at the end of each episode, I plug a weekly dose of inspiration of someone crushing it, so stick around the end because it could be you. This episode is brought to you by our friends at Industry Print Shop out of Austin, Texas. So industry is the authority in screen printing apparel and posters. Their all-star staff will guide you through their order process and help you rock your vision from an idea to a tangible product. Check out industryprintshop.com or follow them at Industry Print Shop on the grams and be blown away by the work they do. This episode is also brought to you by our friends at Retro Supply Co. Retro Supply is the leading provider of Illustrator, Photoshop, Procreate, and Infinity designed resources to make your work stand out in a fraction of the time. Check out their latest products at RetroSupply.co or at RetroSupply on Instagram. And later on, I have two killer deals I'll be offering to you, so take advantage and stay tuned. As you know, today's the big day and it's a trip to have finally made it here. If you've been paying attention and you want first dibs on the swag dropping today and it's before 11 a.m. Central Time, then jump on my newsletter team ASAP right now. Drop what you're doing, perspective-collectiveteam.com. I'm dropping a, a private link an hour early to everyone on the newsletter team before the public release at noon Central Time. I have limited hand-thrown collector coffee mugs signed and numbered to 48 through Deneen Pottery, Minnesota. I 100% guarantee these will sell out at public launch. I guarantee it, so jump on it now. I also have limited runs of 50 screen-printed 18x24 posters and 50 insanely comfy yet expertly printed tees through Industry Print Shop. Their quality is top-notch, hence why they're a sponsor. And finally, I have the infamous Abe T-Rex enamel pin that my homeboy Josh Grizzly Wheeler slayed for me. And P.S. If you're needing pins or patches, hit him up until Scotty sent you. Just check him out at Grizzly Wheeler on Instagram. But if you missed out on the private pre-launch, you can still join in on the limited swag and celebrate with us at perspective-collective.com slash shop. Everything is up and live and ready for you. Free U.S. shipping. I'm trying to make everything as affordable as possible so everybody can get in on the action. So again, free U.S. shipping. I knocked down the prices as low as I can for everything. So any of your support goes right back into the podcast so I can update equipment going to 2019 to take this show to the next level. So the big 100, the number 100 can be intimidating. A hundred of anything is a lot. A hundred speeches, a hundred workouts, a hundred diapers changed. I'm pretty sure I got there already, but kicking out a hundred episodes just baffles me as I was just focused on getting past the 10, the 20 and the 50 episode barriers. So this milestone is exciting. Yes, it's very exciting, but I've been more stressed about it than anything. I've placed a lot of pressure on myself to make this some epic event, hence the art prompts, um, the swag, and the giveaway. And shout out to all of you who did the Perspective Podcast 100 art prompt. I sincerely appreciate it, and I hope you enjoyed getting some love and shares back. But most importantly, out of all of this, I needed to make today special. So it could be something I could look back on and celebrate knowing that I've given you, the listener, as much value as I could. And without a doubt, this moment is insanely special. And after re-listening to hours of previous episodes to create this one, I realized a few things. I've been able to open up and share my story and embrace my past so I can create a killer future. Okay, that's number one. And number two, this podcast has sparked incredible relationships with some of my biggest inspirations in the creative industry and... I've been able to soak up and dish out all their wisdom and package it up and give it to you. And number three, it's allowed me to connect with amazing people like you all around the world. 
the interactions with you online and in person at like conferences, it, it, it motivates me and it truly fulfills my soul. I'm getting a little sappy on you. And I've learned so much from all the guests I've had on, but some advice that you'll be hearing today is things that really struck a nerve with me. And these people's words made a significant impact on my daily mindset and my approach. And I feel everything I share with you today is going to hit home with you too. So the following, in no particular order, I tried to do it with how they flow the best. There, There's no number ones better better than 10, okay? They're, they're all in the same plane. It just, it's just a matter of how they flow together. But the following are the top 10 tips from industry juggernauts to elevate your creative hustle. Now, there's a, a wee little bit of overlap in each guest's message, but to me, that really drives home the importance of applying these principles to your pursuits. So sit back, open your mind, and let this heavy dose of knowledge vibrate through your body and soul. <laughs> oh yeah, it's like that today. You can follow along with the show notes at perspective-collective.com slash 100. I would love to know your thoughts on this one. So please, please, please take a screenshot and tag me on your Instagram stories. Tag me at Perspective Podcast and let's connect. I've been loving doing that with everyone. And also do me a favor, if you found value in this episode... I'd love if you could leave a rating and review over on Apple Podcast. At the end of each episode, I also share uh, one of your reviews to return the love back to you. And you're in for a treat as well. I have some new tunes from my homie Bluka. And here's a special treat from Propaganda. You're listening to episode 100. Let's go. Yo, 100 episodes, Scotty. Congrats, on boy. Yeah, correct perception, it turns a blizzard to a breeze Incite your windpipe to weigh the whack down with ease Command Z em, all them fears and unbite the apple No control, CV em, yeah Top tip number one comes from Eric Marinovich And this one's all about celebrate the later So back in episode 85, perspective-collective.com slash 85 So when I throw these numbers out, you know where to find them I had the privilege of having Eric Marinovich, the lettering legend out of San Francisco on the show. There's a ton of gold in that episode, but there was a segment where we talked about celebrating the later, which gave me permission to keep pushing my limits. It's hard to just stop what you're doing, invest like two weeks to just switch it up. It's tough. It's very tough. Creating the things that maybe aren't in at the time, I think so many of us get wrapped up like, I'm going to create this because people like to see it instead of I'm going to create this because I think it's dope and different. Like, so many people get wrapped up into that. And we should celebrate the late, the later, you know, instead of like, oh, right, let's just do whatever's popular. Um, you know, because that's the easy way out or easy way in. But the thing that I talk about is if you present something new to the world, and it doesn't get, and I always, it's so funny, all these conversations evolve around social media because that's the new currency that we all live in, is if I do post something that gets 10% of my like normal whatever likes, I know I'm onto something, I'm onto something new, you know? Yeah. And I, I, I appreciate those moments and I look out for those for when they hit. Um, so it's just something to be mindful of. I mean, you got to have you know, a little bit of a, a spark to know that you're on the right track. It's like, that doesn't need to be your oxygen, but at least, you know, like you're throwing some spaghetti on the wall and something sticking. <laughs> sticks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, totally. You know? Um, but I also think it's just like we, as people, our interests evolve, the people we hang out with change and all of those come into play. And they basically, I, I always talk about, you know, they filter through, all the stuff that you're thinking about and how you see and the lens that you put on the world and uh, just being open to like look for new things, have new conversations because that really will entice you to um, create, create new interesting work. Cause that's how I, a, lo a lot of that stuff fuels me like having these conversations or making time to actually just not do what I do every day, you know, man, the episode with him is, is so good, but I want to distill some of the main takeaways I got from this little nugget of our conversation. So when he talks about celebrate the later, you know, this really stood out to me. So 
What this means is celebrate when you see someone doing something new and exciting, as we often don't notice these pioneers till way later in the game. So you could be one of these pioneers right now. And when you see other people doing something awesome, you know, let's make sure we're celebrating and giving people pat on the back and sending them some love, some engagement to let them know to keep pushing it. They're on the right track. Next, one of the takeaways I got was all about staying curious. Don't be afraid to experiment and explore new mediums or styles as you could unlock a new skill and develop your style from there. Next up, don't tie your self-worth into engagement. When experimenting smaller engagement, I believe he said 10%, you know, if you're getting something way smaller than what you normally do, but you're putting yourself out there trying something new, it could mean that you're just onto something massive and new that people haven't seen yet. Again, you could be this pioneer of introducing this new style and could start a whole new wave of things and eventually just blow up from there. So don't get wrapped up if your engagement isn't the same as it normally is when you try and experiment with something new. And the final takeaway is avoid trend bandwagons, all right, or being a trend vampire sucker. You know, it's hard enough as it is to stand out when you're trying to blend in and try to do and mimic what everybody else is doing. So when you see something popping off or you see a certain style that's just littering your feet on Instagram, you know, that's going to become a novelty. It's going to become something that everybody sees. So why not shake it up and do something different or Take that style and make it your own and completely just blow it out of the water with your own flavor. Again, stop trying to fit in so much when I think we should just put ourselves out there, enjoy those weird quirks about ourselves that help us stand out, that help us rise above the noise in this oversaturated field. So avoid jumping on those those trend bandwagons. So again, listen to Eric's episode. Uh, that's episode 85. And you can connect and follow Eric's journey at Eric Marinovich on Instagram. Thank you, Eric. Hot top tip number two. This one comes from my homegirl, Lauren Hom of Hom Sweet Hom. And this one's all about what makes a good passion project. So if you need some guidance on making a successful side project or passion project, then I highly recommend checking out episode 75 with Lauren. She showered us with value about pouring your true self into your work so it can be relatable to others. And let's listen in on what she had to say on this. What really uh, did it for me, you know, doing passion projects is I was like, okay, like I'm the product now and I can make, you know, stuff that gets eyes on my work and the things that I'm passionate about and, you know, grow my audience and spread my message I think that what makes a good passion project in my experience is, um, it's something I like to call the group, group text test. And do you have a, I I don't know if guys have this. Do you, do you have like a group text with all your buddies? I mean, maybe a Slack here and there, but I've never been like that. No, like small, I have like a mastermind, but it's not just for boys. So yeah. Yeah. Like maybe it's like a Slack channel or a group text or something, an email thread with your friends. Um, and what I like to tell people is that, Try to make stuff that you would be excited to share about in your group text. You know, the stuff like like a meme. A meme is a great example when you see something and you're like, oh, my God, I got to text that to my friends like they're going to love it. Um, And so that actually links to the other point I was going to make where I've found a lot of success making really relatable work. And what I mean by that is. I make work for me and my friends, um, my demographic. And so I've always said that if I make work for my target, for, for my demographic, then like I am the marketer and the target audience. So like I've already done the market testing because I know what my, my friends and I want. And um, I always tell people too that, you know, you, whatever you and your friends are geeking out about or laughing about or having deep conversations about, I guarantee you other pockets of people are talking about the same stuff. And even if, you know, I can't relate to what you and your friends talk about, or you can't relate to what me and my friends talk about, it's all about finding your niche and like finding your people online. And not everyone has to love your work. Um, it's actually probably better if not everyone loves your work, because if everybody loves your work, it's probably pretty safe and like, pretty like devoid of any real point of view. Um, and so, yeah, my, my whole thing was like infuse as much of my personality and like experience into my own work. And I, I make projects about whatever is currently going on in my life. Daily dishonesty is a great example of that. 
You better believe I was stoked out of my gourd when she said yes and we made things happen. And then she got the trade off and let me do her homework guest assignment, which was all dope, just all how it worked out. And this episode was really, really special. It gave me a couple breakthroughs, but this segment specifically that I took out of our episode, you know, there was a few things that stuck out to me that I think will really be relatable to you. So when she talks about making successful side projects, she talks about the group text test. So essentially think about if, if you're struggling of thinking of ways to produce content or, or what you should be making, think about those things that get you excited. You know, the things that if you have close homies or a Slack group or a Facebook messenger or a WhatsApp, whatever the fuck you use and you text dumb shit to your friends all day, what are those things that you get excited about that you know they're going to get excited about as well? You know, that's just fun things off the top of your head that you can immediately do. Or if you guys have, you know, song lyrics or inside jokes that is money. Make things around that that you know at least your friends and you can relate to. And making more relatable work, you know your demographic as you are the marketer and target audience. So I, I guess I, I'm i back on business account, just testing it back out on Instagram right now. And I can see my, my demographic of 25 to 35 year olds and it's about split with male and female. But in my mind, I am my own demographic. You know, I'm the kind of person that needs... I, I love motivational stuff. I love personal development. I love business savvy things. I like things that are going to really light a spark and, you know, give me ideas to pursue my creative grind and career. And being that you are the marketer and you're the target audience. So if you're creating things that excite you, that you know will resonate with you, put that out there and you're going to attract those like-minded people who resonate with that work. And again, you already know what your friends want. So give them more of what they want too if you're struggling for ideas. And think about it, whatever you and your friends are geeking out about or having those deep conversations about, create something related to it. And something else that really stuck out is just showing your true colors. Don't hold back on injecting your personality and experiences into your work. You know, this was big in this episode. We talked about waving your freak flag. And I also put an episode about it in episode 81. You know, the cute little E.T. dressed up like an old lady grandma thing was the, the artwork for that. But it was all about waving your freak flag, showing your weird, embracing those weird quirks or qualms that make you unique and different. Show it in your work. Go out there and put yourself into the world and attract the, the same kind of freaks that relate to how freaky you are. And the last thing I got from her takeaway was don't play it safe. And this one really hits home because I, I feel for the first couple years of Perspective Collective, I played it really safe. I was super scared to offend people. I didn't swear, even though, you know, I swear all the time. It just comes from my background of football, sports, coaching. Can't help it. Well, I probably could, but, you know, it's just me. I'm not going to filter myself anymore. And you shouldn't filter yourself either. If you're trying to create something that everyone loves, your work is too safe and you're playing it too safe. So stop trying to appeal to the masses. Stop riding the fence have an interesting opinion or just put out something that you feel is interesting to you, right? Don't play it safe. You can't please everyone. You are not pizza. Thank you so much, Lauren. It means the world to me that you took the time to be on here with how busy you are. She's also got her passion to paid course. I think that's dropping soon. So participate in that if it's still open, as well as participate in her Homworks weekly challenge series. You can connect with her and follow Lauren's journey at Hom Sweet Hom on Instagram. Next up. Hot tip number three, don't stop working when the work stops. And this one comes from Austin Dunbar of Durham Brandon Co. And don't sleep on episode 70 with Austin, especially if you need that, that pep talk about putting in the work and handling clients and again, finding your style and just owning it and having some creed for yourself to work on these principles, these foundations for you to just crush it each day and have your mantras. So Austin and I, we covered a ton of topics on this episode, but Shit got real when we went through his official rule book of Durham Branding Co. More specifically, rule number six, don't stop working when the work stops. All right, number six. You briefly touched on this. Don't stop working when the work stops, if you can hit home a little bit. Yeah, don't stop working when the work stops, you know. And I think it kind of dovetails into um, cool doesn't pay the bills clients do. Like, just make the work that you want to make and put the work out that you want to attract because law of attraction is real. 
Dude, thank you. If tomorrow I woke up and you're like, you know what? I want to write words and procreate like Scotty and just rip it. I'm going to start writing words like Scotty and just ripping it. And because eventually I'll start getting that kind of work. You know, um, I think it's just putting in the work and um, and the work will eventually come to you. On a tangent, this is what I'm guilty of as I'm big into the law of attraction. I'm big into it. And, sure. I, and I ask, like, you, are you big into asking too? And out loud too. You know, um, so yeah, I'm not going to go, I'm not going to go on a tangent and go crazy, crazy, but straight up, um, um, I'm a faith based dude. And when I worked at this big global agency called LPK for five months that got me back from Chicago, I, I had a, a, a like a 40, 40 minute drive to work and every morning you praying or just talking, all I would say for 40 minutes is like, God willing, I want to open up a design studio, you know? And you don't have to put God into it or anything else, but just being able to vocalize that stuff, yeah, it's exactly what you're saying. It's just like law of attraction. And when it came time for me to stand up to the plate, I was super thankful for it. And I was like, I just want to sit up here and just hit home runs. You know, I don't want this thing to stop um, because it was something I was asking for and hopefully, you know, was going to attract. So, yeah, man, I'm, I'm super into that stuff. Even regardless of law of attraction, just learning how to ask in general, even people for things like the answer is always no if you never ask. So I love Austin. I love everything he's about, everything he stands for. He knows his style. He knows his voice and he just owns that shit and just crushes it. And I'm very lucky that I just went to Creative Works in 2017 and just happened to cross paths with them and we built a, a relationship and a connection ever since. And here are a few highlights I think you can implement ASAP into your creative hustle. From our conversations, I took this one away. Cool doesn't pay the bills, clients do. So often people look at the cool work and just admire you for it and are jealous of it when really it's like that cool work hasn't really paid the bills yet. But the cool work that you're creating are typically self-initiated side projects, which eventually will lead to some of the cool workers, to some of the, the bigger projects that you attract into your career. So don't go telling people like, man, you, you do all the cool work when really you have no idea. And maybe you're not seeing some of the work behind the scenes that are actually paying the client bills. But if you want to do the cool work, do it yourself. And that's the next takeaway is make the work you want to make. So when things are slow, or maybe you don't have ideas or client work's not coming in at the moment, don't sit around waiting for work to happen or don't sit around waiting for inspiration. Take initiative and create the work you wish to see. And this can go back into um, Lauren's side projects. You create relatable work that you're the, you're the target market and you're the demographic at the same time, the marketer. Go out and put out the work you wish to see. And next is all about law of attraction. I talk about it on this show you may think it's all woo-woo and some crazy bullshit, but it's not, okay? I've gone to conferences. I study the biggest names out in the, the world, the millionaires, the billionaires. Whether they're religious or not, they all talk about the law of attraction and focusing on taking your thoughts and your words and your beliefs and creating them into your reality. And I'm huge on this. And I'm going to talk more about this next week. But if all the biggest names in the world are talking about this, there might be something to it. So... Don't, this is the perspective podcast for a reason, okay? Don't be turned off to seeing the world through a different lens, okay? Challenge your thinking. And so the law of attraction and how I took it with Austin when we talked about it is put out the work you want to attract and put your thoughts into the world like they're your current reality. And eventually, you know, your dreams and your reality are just going to catch up to your mindset if you keep putting in the work and keep believing in yourself, all right? And then next, the final takeaway I got from Austin was ask. Do not be afraid to ask the universe for the things you want. Or better yet, don't be afraid to ask people. Don't be afraid to ask that girl out. Don't be afraid to have the hard conversations with your significant other. Because if you don't ask, the biggest thing I'm learning right now is the answer is always no. And what's funny is there's some people that I'm scared to ask on this show because they're just big names. And of course, the answer is no right now because I'm not nutting up and I'm not going out there taking initiative and asking them. And the people that I was scared to ask previously all said yes, and they've been guests on this show. And you're hearing a couple of them today on the Massive Highlights. So thank you so much, Austin. Don't stop working when the work stop. I encourage you to check out Austin, buy cool shit from his shop, follow along with his journey at Durham Brand & Co. on Instagram. Moving on to top tip number four. This is all about hiring yourself. 
So back in episode 71, the twin duo of Amy and Jed Hood of Hoodspah dropped more than a few knowledge bombs on us. So during our episode, they were in the final stages of wrapping up their book, Freelance and Business and Stuff, otherwise known as Fabus or Fabus, whatever. Whatever it is, you should totally get it. I've read through it. It's absolutely incredible. And I'll be linking it up in the show notes. But after re-listening to this episode with Jen and Amy, I realize much of what we talked about with their story and their grind and their hustle is what set them up on the path to write this successful book and everything they've learned along their journey to package it up and pass it along to you. So listen, and I think you're going to find a lot of value in this nugget. You shared something about how people wouldn't hire you without a degree. And so you made your own opportunities by hiring yourself. And I I love that Uh, Tony from Industry Print Shop was on here and he's talking about like opportunities weren't there. So I built a door for, you know, opportunities to knock. And I thought that was really cool how you guys kind of said it too. So, you know, how important has it been for you to be proactive and not expect things to be delivered to you like a fresh and hot piping pizza to your front door? You know, what, what are some of the things you've had to do to, you know, make opportunities come for yourself? Right. Uh, I mean, that that is like such a common thread with all entrepreneurs is if there's not an opportunity that they're going to make their own. And that's like the difference between, you know, somebody that wants to work for somebody else, which there's nothing wrong with that. But if you want to work for yourself, you have to make your own opportunities. And it's usually just I think for us, it was um, it was it was just saying yes to a lot of things to figure out what we were good at and to just get work, you know, and then. Um, I mean, like when, when the magazine that we were working at, it just went under and th- it wasn't glamorous how we started heads, but it was just that like, no one would hire us and we just had to. But after that, we reached out to everybody and we were shameless and you have to be like, we would post everywhere. We were all over Instagram, all over Facebook, just like telling everyone like, Hey, we're here, we're taking on work and we're pretty, we're pretty good at it too, you know, posting work and, and, um, you kind of have to have an ego and you can't be ashamed to, to share. And I feel like that's, it feels so gross at first, right? Like when For you're sure. like promoting yourself or it does, right? Like, as a, as a creative, just, we're, we're more salesmen. If anything, we're selling ourselves, you know, right? always con- everything you do in life, you're selling yourself to someone or you're performing in whatever you do. For sure. Oh, you are. And I think that's, that's what makes a great freelancer is that you understand that you have to sell it. But um, the dream jobs more came about because we started doing just passion projects, doing stuff that we wanted to yeah, do, 100%. showing the kind of work that we could do. And that's your motto of hiring yourself in a sense. Oh, yeah. for sure. Totally. Yeah. Like when when people like like when we got the target jobs, the the inspiration that they showed us for why they wanted to work with us, you know, like they'll give you like a brief and then they'll say like, this is the kind of work that we like that you're doing. It was all of our self-initiated posters, like literally every single one of them. And that goes for a lot of it, like getting those dream clients that pay you to do the fun stuff. You have to show them that you can do the fun stuff really well. And, you you know, that that's not client work. That's stuff that you do because you have a passion for maybe the subject matter or, you know, whatever it is. But um, and, you know, finding those projects for yourself is so, so important, especially if you want to um, hone in your style and like figure out what your personal style is. So good. I know, I'll say it for you because I already know that you know, but the following takeaways that I took from this this segment of our conversation are what I believe are some of the crucial moves they made to find their continued success, which is leading to massive client projects, public speaking, workshops, you name it. These girls are living the dream right now. And I believe it all boils down to one, hiring yourself, aka starting up self-initiated passion project. You see this theme that's going on here right now with the last couple people, but it's all just worded differently and and all these people are applying it that we look up to. So there's gotta be something going on here, okay? And this is something that you can sink your teeth into. So hiring yourself means making your own opportunities instead of waiting for things to come to you. Show the work you wanna do and show the work that you're capable of doing because people aren't gonna hire you if they don't know what you're capable of doing. And this is me. I had to do murals and stuff. I had to do fake mock-ups in the beginning just to show people, hey, this is what this could look like. I even did my first, what was it, two or three murals for free before I could show the work that I wanted to get. But it was all up to me self-initiating these passion projects. And next, this one I really, really vibe to, 
And this is what I believe is really the key that's changed my career was saying yes. Say yes to a lot of things. Say yes to everything in the beginning to figure out what you're good at. Get so fucking good at this stuff that you can get to the point where you can say no. Say no to the things that aren't incredible opportunities. Say no to the okay opportunities so you can say hell yes to the amazing things that come your way. But in the beginning for me, public speaking terrified me, but I said yes to the opportunity. I said yes to blogging. I said yes to teaching workshops. I said yes to the call, and that's what led me to this podcast. And whatever's coming next, if it scares me and it frightens me, I'm going to say yes to that shit. And I've gotten to the point where I'm pretty much saying no to anything outside of murals, teaching, and the podcast. Okay, Those are my, my things right now. This is what I want to focus on. And I've said yes to so many other things that I've gotten to this point where I can say no. And the next thing that I really took away from here is be shameless. Promote the hell out of yourself to get your work out there. You can't be ashamed to share. Just like uh, in Austin's segment, you can't be afraid to ask too. Ask your friends to share. I give you asks and call to actions all the time on the podcast, hoping that you will find value in what I do. I'm going to give, 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 give that jab, jab, jab. And then I'm going to give you a right hook. And then I ask for you to share. You know, if I've given you value, I, I give a small ask in return. Maybe you can share it with your friends and maybe this message will land on them. So be shameless, promote yourself, get on Facebook, post as often as you can that you can fit within your schedule and your sanity. Do Instagram TV, get on your stories, put your face out there, get uncomfortable, rattle the cage, shake the tree, do things that make you uncomfortable and be shameless about putting yourself out there because the ones who are criticizing in a negative fashion are the ones who are too scared to create in the first place to put themselves out there. So be shameless. I'm working on this myself. And if you found value in this, man, you should totally connect and follow Amy and Jen's journey at Hoodspa on Instagram and check out their freelance book. It will no doubt make an impact on you and your creative career. Thank you, ladies. Damn, I really, really sincerely appreciate you too and what you do for our community. Number five of these top tips is make your own luck by building doors. Sometimes you get a chance to cross paths with someone who's just genuinely living a life focused on giving and serving. And this one goes out to my homie, Tony Diaz and the industry print shop family. You know, they, they show me that you can make big waves, have a good ass time and still make serving people your top priority. So back in episode 56, Tony opens up and shares his incredible story of how he built industry from the ground up with blood, sweat and mostly tears. I think you're really going to dig this one the biggest driving force of was it the fuck you to the counselors and stuff at the time or was it just something internal driven that got you to that place like the the drive like little tiny milestones you were selling the merch then you were going you know doing the tech stuff for the band and next thing you know you're in the band on the warp tour i say this a lot i feel like you know like you make your own luck like opportunity knocks but not if there's no door there I felt like I built a door and I made my own luck. I didn't plan for any of that shit to happen. It just did. And it was like, just, I guess, rolling with the momentum. Like, yo, this happened. All right, cool. I- I'm real bad at like celebrating victories. Dude, I'm like, the it's worst, like, man. I'm the right? worst. It's like, all right, oh, wow. Like, it, if there was like an artist that I ever wanted to print for and we're printing for them, I'm like, oh, damn. Yeah. And then the next second, I'm like, on to the next one. What's like, next? My, exactly. Dude, yeah, like, I'm oh, right cool. there like, with you. I put an episode it, about like celebrating small wins or any kind of win because I don't do it. I, it's, I, I just, I'm just like, oh, like, cool. Like, you know, pat on the back, whatever. Like, what do you want a cookie? Like, you're, sup- <laughs> you're supposed to go after this shit. If you haven't yet, please make it a top priority. Go back to episode 56. Please listen to this one. Get to know Tony. Get to know the industry print shop crew. Clearly, they're a sponsor of this, but Tony has done so much for me and the creative community. And I'm so lucky to have found him at Crop a couple years ago. I found so many of these amazing people at conferences, but Crop's been just such a special one to me that's blossomed so many beautiful relationships. So shout out to Matt Dawson. But I can't say enough good things about Tony. And his story is incredible. And the value that he gives, like he have one conversation with him face to face and you just, you feel it. 
you feel exactly what I'm talking about. You can just get that vibe for someone. And Tony has that it factor. And his whole crew is the shit as well. And believe me, they know how to party. But I'm rambling. Tony gets me emotional. But the following main takeaways from this experience in the door building business that I got is one, making your own luck. All right. It, it, it takes preparation, of course, but opportunity is always out there knocking. But if there's no door that you built there, you know, it's going to be hard for luck to land in your lap. And so many of us wait for a door to pop itself up or for someone to deliver us our dreams to our front door, like a hot piping fresh pizza from Domino's or wherever you like to order pizza from, but it doesn't work that way. So the next takeaway is all about joining the door building business. So build your own damn doors. I'm not a carpenter, but I know how to make things happen, but I had to learn because I played the victim for so long and I got tired of playing the victim. And when I, when I flipped that switch from victim to savage, I guess you would say, I began making my own luck. I, I made my own luck by hiring myself, by taking initiative and making side project, passion projects, which all led to me to where I'm in today. You know, maybe that one thing that you take initiative on isn't the thing you'll do for the rest of your life, but it could connect you to the the next person who can open those opportunities or you could strike gold by tapping into this next skill set that you're about to learn. But it all starts with you joining the door building business. Make your own luck, make your own opportunities. And next we talk about this, celebrating W's. In the past, I've mentioned that I'm not the best at celebrating victories. It's something I've really had to uh, uh, be more focused on more intentional by. And so celebrating the victories allows you to make a timestamp of that moment. And I'm, I'm guilty in the past of living in the what's next instead of living in the now. And when you live in the what's next, you eliminate that special moment. Like this moment we're sharing right here, this is special. And I'm going to make sure to celebrate that and make this time span, uh, a t- time stamp of this moment in my mind so I can look back on it and just relive it. I've been guilty in the past. I'm sure Tony, Tony's always just like, okay, I I climbed that mountain. I hit that peak. What's next? And I've done that too. And I don't want to be like that anymore. I still want to be hungry and and chase that next mountain. I want to climb that next mountain. But at the same time, you know, I want to enjoy the ride along the way. And when something awesome happens, I want to celebrate it with, with people around me because I don't want to build this empire and turn my back around and I can't celebrate with anyone because I didn't take anyone along for this journey. I was just so tunnel visioned on the future of the what's next. So, you know, celebrate those W's, hoard those victories. Yeah, that's really important. I know I talked about that in the three life lessons pizza series as well. So go back and listen to that if you want more detail on this. And the final takeaway I got from Tony was be a savage. And I loved it when he said, You're supposed to go after this shit. We're meant to chase our dreams and pursue our best selves. And I'm going to put a little spin on that. Yes, we're meant to chase our dreams, pursue our best selves. But I truly believe that we have a bigger purpose of making an impact on other people, finding that gift and giving it away. It's an an incredible Picasso quote. I know I believe Andy J. Miller talks about it too, but it really hits home with me. And, And find that best version of yourself and make an impact on others. So shout out to Tony. You can connect with him and the industry crew at Industry Print Shop on Instagram. Love you, brother. Well, isn't this a coincidence and serendipitous, but I need to give a huge thank to our sponsors. So my homie, Tony Diaz, which you just heard about, please go listen to his episode. And the Industry Print Shop crew are leaders in the world of screen printing. They work with juggernauts like my homies, Lincoln Design Co., Benny Gold, and Volcom, and they want to make cool shit with you too. So if you're looking to get started in the merch game with Printer Apparel, take advantage of this podcast listener-only deal. When requesting a quote at industryprintshop.com, mention promo code PERSPECTIVE to receive free screen setup up to $120 or get 100 free 3x3-inch die-cut stickers on any new minimum orders placed. Here's an example of especially the tee that I got on slanging right now. It was done by industry. So say you have a four color design like I had. This promo code literally saves you $120 right there with screen setup for all those colors that you got. Or get those stickers and leave your mark by plastering a hundred of them of your designs across your turf. Make your name known. Either way, it's a win-win. So again, 
when requesting a quote online at industryprintshop.com, use promo code PERSPECTIVE and get your own merch out there into the world. Next up, shout out to our other sponsor, Retro Supply Co. and my homeboy, Dustin Lee. He also has the, the community passive income for designers. So Retro Supply, man. They're the leading provider of Illustrator, Photoshop, Procreate, and Affinity Design resources to make your work stand out in a fraction of the time. Here's the deal. Use promo code SCOTTY20 to save 20% off all their design resources like brushes, ashes, textures, and fonts. This code works on their insane bundle kits like the I Want It All Photoshop brushes, the I Want It All Illustrator brushes, or my personal favorite, the I Want It All Procreate brushes use the hell out of those so you can follow along on my stories on instagram to see how i put them to work as i'm always sharing the process and answering your questions and i hope to do a webinar sometime in the near future to really break those down so again use promo code scotty20 go visit my instagram visit the link in my profile of either the perspective underscore collective or the perspective podcast page that i have the links in there in the profile will take you to Retro Supply Co. And then you can scavenge their whole site for what you need and get 20% off everything they have there. So thank you so much, Retro Supply. You've seriously elevated my work ever since I've got on that iPad. So thank you again. And check them out on Instagram at Retro Supply and connect and follow them. Dustin Lee's a sweetheart. Coming in at number six, what is meaningful content? And this one's with my homie Ben Real Verse World. So when local Iowa legend Ben Haggerty isn't touring and creating content for the biggest artists in the game, like currently, he's just finishing up his tour with Jay-Z and Beyonce. No big deal. Freaking crazy. But when he's not touring and shooting video and creating content for these juggernauts, he's building community and providing value with his Black With No Cream podcast and Facebook community. And without a doubt, he is the definition of creative hustle. So back in winter of 2018, uh, Ben was on episode 61 of mine. We came to my office and we did a, a shared episode. I was on his Black With No Cream podcast and then we recorded for mine. Episode 61, Ben shares his insane story of taking risks, uprooting his life from Iowa, moving to California, sleeping on couches and blow up mattresses, persevering through adversity, overcoming obstacles, and just obsessively making killer content. I think you're really going to enjoy this little segment I whipped up for you. You consider yourself a content creator. And sometimes in this world, content creator can be a little bit vague. But for me, I create content, but at the same time, I create art that means something. So what does creating content mean to you and how are ways that people can create content, whether it's through art or photography and, you know, tie some kind of value. Maybe they're educating someone through their art or photography or um, inspiring. So like what's content mean to you? Because it's more than just creating content. Anybody can create some content. Absolutely. And having meaning behind it is a whole nother game, which I say that all the time to be a I just truly think content tells stories, right? Like if you create good content that can tell a story, then you're doing something right because you're right. I can go take a brand new $5,000 camera out tomorrow and go stand somewhere and take a picture of a tree and be like, look what my new crispy camera got me is this cool photo. And I could blow it up and print it out and go to a coffee shop and put it on a wall and say, buy it for $600. But everyone's going to walk in and not have a clue what that story or like what the story mm -hmm. is to that tree. And when they ask you and you have no definition, you're fucked. Mm -hmm. Oh, that tree's, oh, it was just right there across the street from the camera store. I just took it and I'll buy it. $600. That's what I want to make. Here's my this. muffin from Panera. Exactly. Yeah. So to me, I, I just always try to find a way to tell a story. And I think that everyone has the ability to do that. And I think everyone has a story. So the ability to create content, all the means are there. We can learn on YouTube. You don't have to go to a four-year college anymore these days to be able to figure out how to make this shit. If you want to draw, draw, motherfucker. Just draw, 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 draw until you start seeing change and use that and tell stories with it, right? Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. For me, it's it's just tell a story. Find a find the best way to tell a story. I feel like I tangent too much. No, no, no. That's <laughs> great because a lot of people think it's just create content, put something out there. But in my eyes, yes, you're telling a story. You're creating an experience for someone. Mm. You know, that's, that's huge. Or... I think before you post something, you know, regardless if you're doing it for yourself or not, I think there's a point if you're building your own personal brand and you post something, it's like, why the fuck should anybody care about this? Yeah. You know, yeah. and if it's storytelling and experience or, you know, entertainment or educational, you know, I think those are the routes and you just got to find 
you know, the way that you can tell that story the best. My man, Ben Haggerty, he's He's definitely not shameless to promote himself, just like in the Hoodspa episode. He has a very eccentric personality. It's contagious. And he's just so obsessed with creating and experimenting and becoming the best at what he does. And honestly, it really motivates me. It's incredibly inspiring to see his story. And for me, it's just entertaining. I love to just kick back, get the popcorn ready because I want to see what he does and accomplishes next. And for me, he's accomplished so many incredible things, but I feel like he hasn't even scratched the surface. So here's some of the highlights of our, our conversation that I, I think will really benefit you. So for me, I believe there's three types of content that he and I talk about. There's educational, where you're teaching what you know, sharing the process, um, whatever someone asks questions, just give them some knowledge, okay? Educate people. Two, inspirational. If you can make people feel something, you can get them out of a rut, get them through breaking through a barrier and having beliefs in themselves, then that's inspirational. And the third is entertaining. If you can you know, soak up someone's time where they just enjoy the hell out of whatever they're watching, maybe they don't get anything educational, inspirational from it, whatever. That's still content that entertains. I think of... You know, people in this new fascination with watching EA Sports and people playing video games online. To me, that's entertainment. And maybe there's educational because, you know, you're giving them tips on how to play Fortnite. Or maybe it's inspirational that you feel you can, you know, get yourself out of your parents' basement and go be a massive EA Sports star. Whatever. But for me, if you can create content that has all three in one, to me, this is the holy grail, especially if you can involve storytelling. And that's what Ben's great at is storytelling. And that's what he feels is the key. So amazing content tells stories. And Ben and I both believe that everyone has a story and we all have this ability to tell our story. And again, that's what this podcast is about is not only giving you the permission slip and empowering you to create incredible work, but also develop your style and find your voice and locking down your story and sharing it with the world gives other people a permission slip to tell their stories to make an impact. By you owning the adversity within your story, you give them permission to own the failures, the, the ups and downs, everything that's gone shitty in their story that they can package up and use it to their advantage to the greater good, to share it with someone else You know who needs that permission to know that they're not alone with whatever demons or doubt that they're dealing with. So your story... I guess Ben would agree with this too, but I firmly believe your story is your most valuable asset. And the more I started sharing my story, the more I started attracting the like-minded people who resonated with me as a human with my story. I got them to start sharing and open up and tell their stories to me. It's, it's truly impactful. And I encourage you to open up, especially if you're introverted. And finally, when you're creating content, this is a big one that we talked about is Think about it. What's what's in it for them? What's in it for you? When when I hit publish, what is the audience on the other end going to get from this? Why should anyone care? And if you keep in your mind, you're creating one of these types of content of educational, inspirational, or entertaining and involving some type of storytelling when people can see themselves in the story. You know, you're truly creating an experience for someone. And that's why they should care. There should always be a benefit. Don't just post it to post it. I mean, maybe once in a while, that's okay. I'm not going to say a definitive answer on that. But for me, I, I truly think about what am I posting? You know, who's it going to benefit and why should anybody care? And that's really important to me. So thank you so much, Ben, for enlightening us with your story, your wisdom, and how you've been on this killer content creation journey. Follow along with Ben's story at Ben Real vs. World on Instagram. Top tip number seven is all about hustle and outreach. If you look into the urban dictionary, I guess it would be next to Ben Haggerty's name for the definition of creative hustle, you're also going to find Roxy and Phoebe of Pander Design Co. And I can't forget to mention that they also host the successful Drunk on Lettering podcast. These girls are hustlers, but they do it strategically. And I, I'm just blown away. I have the utmost respect for them as they're truly blazing their own paths and setting an example, not only for females out there, but for anyone who's hungry to make shit happen for themselves. In episode 65, they dish out some of their secrets and tips for hustling and outreach that I know will light a fire under your ass. Let's take a listen. Does most of your workflow come through Instagram, your website, or is it through outreach? 
It's about 50, 50. Um, so 50% coming to us either through seeing us on Instagram or seeing one of our murals out in the wild or like knowing someone that's worked for us. And then 50% through outreach. I, I create probably 80% of the time. And then 20% out there is like promotion with probably zero outreach when I've been hearing mm-hmm. it's probably create 20% of con- uh, of the time with content, 80% of promotion and outreach. But that's so hard for me. Like, how do you two go about that? Do you have designated roles? And I'm, I, I don't do well of being told no. So mm-hmm. I, that's another reason why I don't like doing outreach. But how do you how do you attack that? Well, uh, I don't care about being told no. It's it's just a numbers game. And the more and more people you reach out to, the the more likely you are to get a yes. So, and even when people are saying no to you, they and it's via email, so they're not saying it to your face. They're just saying like, oh, sorry, we're not interested right now. Like no one's actually going to type out something rude to you from saying you want to help them, their business. Now we start by emails and we send out emails to hundreds and hundreds of people. But they're targeted. Targeted, so, targeted. Yeah, we look for certain things like businesses that we know could use our services, that social media is important to them, that they can afford our services, we think. We look for companies that we think would work well with us. How do you look for these companies? Just like online, locally, around like on Facebook or something? Google. Yeah. Google and then just build like a spreadsheet or something just to be like, we're going to attack these people. I'm actually bad. I I used to record it in a spreadsheet, but I don't know. It just got kind of annoying so I just don't even well know. we keep um spreadsheets of all of our past clients so every time we get a new client we put it in this spreadsheet where we list out what industry they're in so sometimes like we were thinking we were doing a lot of work for like co-working spaces and breweries but most of our work is for restaurants and hotels which we weren't really realizing until you actually list it out so um, figuring out what industries work well for you based on past clients. And then Phoebe is like the queen of outreach and finding uh, these businesses. It's fun. It's like being a detective. And you have a pretty strong personality anyway. So, I mean, it's probably right up your alley, right? Yeah, I just am interested in, in finding, oh, like, look at this new restaurant or hotel or like, this business is totally in line with us. Look what they did. Like, we, we reach out to a lot of marketing and PR agencies as well because a lot of what they're doing is experience or experiential marketing. So that makes sense for a live lettering event or whatnot. And mm-hmm. um, so Roxy and I have also put together – uh, a couple presentations catered to different businesses or whatever project we think would make sense for them. So we have a mural presentation, a live lettering presentation, uh, just a general presentation about like how fabulous we are. And then, uh, <laughs> and, you know, depending on like if it's a, if it's a PR or marketing, we'll send them the live lettering, you know. Uh, I mean, sometimes there's overlap. Now, if you're in this community, I know you've been seeing Roxy and Phoebe pop up everywhere in your feeds or at your conferences or on other people's podcasts or your favorite lettering artists on their podcast. They are everywhere. And that's not by accident. They make things happen. And here's some of the main takeaways I was able to distill from this, this little portion of our conversation. So number one, play the numbers. This is big for me. I grew up always being scared of rejection. You know, I had a lot of self-doubt and being rejected by other people or or the possibility of being rejected really put me in a weird funk and hurt my self-esteem. So don't let being told no phase you. It's a numbers game and it goes back to ask. The answer is always no if you don't ask. So continue to ask, continue to be in people's ear. There's someone you want on the show. There's some person you're trying to contact. Just stay in their ear, bug them, annoy them. You never know. Eventually they might... Some lacrosse and notice that, damn, this person's really got a lot of value they can offer back to me. I'm going to say yes this time around. So stack the deck in your favor. The more you reach out, the more your odds of getting a yes increase. So again, don't be scared of rejection. It is what it is. Don't take it personal. And next takeaway, be a nerd. Ugh. Be a nerd and do some research. Research and target potential prospects who align with your needs and who you feel can afford your services. And for me, I have a little list of people I'm targeting for potential sponsorships of the podcast. One person I reached out to, they said, no, it sucked. I was bummed, but it is what it is. Nothing personal, you know, and I need to continue to play the numbers game and go after these people I align with who I feel bring you value in hopes that they will be aligned and join the team and support the show. So be a nerd, continue to do that research. And finally, pitch your potential. 
This goes along with be a nerd and research these target potential prospects or clients, these people you're trying to attract work to. Take initiative, pitch your potential to them. Create presentations like Roxy and Phoebe do to send off to these prospects. So I am in the process of building a presentation deck about my murals, you know, especially with local people. And Lisa Quine did something awesome. She did a mural referral thing. Like if you ended up landing her a paid mural position, she pays you like a hundred bucks. So that's something cool you can do. I've also built a, a pitch deck presentation on potential podcast sponsors. These people I'm targeting, I send them this. You can build pitch deck presentations on design or your social media marketing or how you're a killer photographer. Again, Pitch yourself, embrace yourself, be shameless, put yourself out there, play the numbers, stack the deck in your favor. Thank you so much, Roxy and Phoebe, for all that you do for our creative community. Connect and follow along with their journey at Pander Design Co. or Drunk on Lettering on Instagram. Thank you, ladies. Moving forward, top tip number ocho or eight for those who don't speak Spanish. Be obsessive about three things. This is all about focusing on the essentials and ditching the non-essential. And this one comes from Nick Sambrato of Mama Sauce. It's no wonder why Mama Sauce has been so successful in the letterpress, hot foil, and screen printing world. The head honcho, my brother, Nick Sambrato, showcases his mastery of both his mind and his business tactics back in episode 84. There's a ton of value in this one. Highly suggest going back to it. And what really stuck out with me that I'm going to talk about here shortly was our discussion around obsessiveness and balance. I think this one's really going to hit home for you, especially if you relate to me about feeling the need to do everything. When I'm really living the Dharma I'm exploring at that moment, and I can only be so wide, so many things, then other things start to slip. So I'll switch up the things I'm thinking about and working on. Currently, right now, one of the things that like every morning alarm rings, I think about this. I try to slow down enough in the day to think about the long tail of my decisions. I try. It's hard. But a reminder goes off every morning. I try to remind myself throughout the day. Only say yes to things that you can do with excellence in peace. You know, like like I, I, I don't want to like I know I'm going to suffer for whatever it is. That's a given. It's going to happen. You're going to pour yourself into it because I'm obsessive. Right. So. I'm trying to carve out a niche when I say yes to something where I'm like, can I, it's, it's basically saying, like, am I going to be free to be obsessed with that thing and whatever thing, like you can only be obsessed with like three things at one time, man. You know, like, like that's about it. I want to be obsessed with my, my, my relationship with, with my special lady friend. I want to be obsessed with my business. Right. And right now it's bread. <laughs> Maybe you can be obsessed with more things than me, but I'm capped at three. So only say yes to things I can spit in the bandwidth I have. Nick freaking Sombrato of Mama Sauce, the behemoth down in Orlando, Florida. They're also great. I love my industry print shop crew, but I also love Mama Sauce. I can love them both. doesn't matter. I can love them both. So here's my breakdown of some of these paradigm shifting thoughts. So takeaway number one, when to say yes. I loved how Nick said this. This this resonates with my soul. I, I think about this every day now, especially after little Scotty was born. This this is even more important for me now that I act on this. So only say yes to things you can do with excellence and peace. This ties into the next takeaway of be obsessive about three things. And it really made sense when he talked about this. And I'm really starting to believe that we have the capacity to truly thrive in three things at once. So in order to thrive, we need to ditch the non-essential and avoid spreading ourselves too thin. I mean, it's the motto of doing less but better. And I really liked how we talked about, you can have three things you're obsessive about, but you know they can vary in the, the percentage of time that you have. So maybe I'm like in this season of my life, I'm 80% in on podcasts and my wife needs to understand that I have these crazy deadlines, especially this month. And maybe I only have two things and the other 20% is something else. But at the top is always family, her and Scotty. But I, I need to communicate about these things and these seasons of the three things I'm obsessive at. So right now for me, the three things I'm obsessive about is the podcast and distilling my message and providing you value and taking this to the next level and fitness. I'm getting back. I'm tired of this dad bod. So fitness is big for me right now. And then just being a killer father, a killer husband and a friend 
and a family member, a sibling, a son, you know, I, I, those are the three things. So podcast, fitness, and family, you know, that's, that's pretty much all I'm being obsessive about at the moment. And when you're able to say yes, and you have these three things that you're obsessive about, it creates this decision filter takeaway number three. So when facing a decision or an opportunity, ask yourself, is this something I'm obsessed with during this season? And can I go all out and kill it with excellence and peace in my mind, knowing that I'm, I'm aligned with my identity and my focus and my vision? That's huge. And I'm working on getting this filter. So this one lives in my head each day. And then finally, number four, accepting that you cannot do it all. I've talked about this so many times in the past. Uh, kill the Superman syndrome. All right. Kill the Superman syndrome. It's okay to be Clark Kent at times. Stop trying to do it all. Realize you can't be everything to everyone, but be the best at the essential. The things that you're obsessive about that are going to get you to where you want to be, that align with your vision, that align with your identity, that help you make the biggest impact on the most people. Okay, To me, that's greatness. So thank you so much, Nick. You really gave me a lot to think about and your words live with me every day. You can connect and follow Mama Sauce and all their incredible work over at Mama Sauce on Instagram. Number nine of the top tips is failure is a tool in your tool belt. And this one comes from Jason Petty, a.k.a. Propaganda. The same person who dropped those hot and fresh bars at the beginning of the show. Thank you again for that, Jason. And I lucked out and got this spoken word superstar propaganda on the show back in episode 82. Please go back and listen to that one for... Someone that's on this level of stardom to open up about his stories of how he felt like a failed artist was so inspiring to say the least. And it's given me permission to continue to be an open book, share my story and not be afraid to fall flat on my face while chasing my dreams. Take a listen to what we had to talk about in this segment. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you've said it so many times on this podcast that like when you you have to frame it right. So when you're framing this L, you know, this loss it's, it's only a loss if you think that's the end of the story. Right. Um, but I'm just like, the story's not over. So there's something else going on here. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, if you, yeah, if you stop, yeah, if you stop star Wars, you know, right when they enter the death star, you know what I'm saying? You're like, it's a big L movies over. <laughs> yeah. Movies over. It's like, actually there's like 45 more minutes. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so I think that, when you learn to when you learn to frame failure like that and being a, a failed artist, two things are happening. One, you're recognizing that you are an artist, right? And I and I feel like when you if you don't let yourself let that sentence come out of your mouth, it's like no, ser- no, I am an artist. This is what I I am an artist. You know what I'm saying? Um, I feel like I struggled with actually saying that. It wasn't until I got invited to like a like a high school like career day that I was like. Oh shit! I'm I I rap for a living. Like I'm an artist. You know what I'm saying? It took me to the age of like 2021 20, to finally accept that I, I I was a closet artist. Like man, I I I'm a I draw. You know, and I'm I'm proud of this. But it took me to the age of 26 to be like, damn, I can like do something with this now. So this is what I do. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like so. I think the first step in that sentence is understanding that like no, no, truthfully, you're an artist. You know what I'm saying? And then secondly is like failure is a tool in a tool belt like this is it's the it's 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 only dead again if you if you accept that the story ends at that moment i just don't accept that i'm like the story ends when i'm dead you feel me um and if i'm still breathing then that means that there's something going on here damn jason just listening to him talk or speak and perform it's hard to put into words. It's just captivating. It leaves me in awe. This is someone who's just truly found their style and their voice and just owns who he is and just thrives and excels at it. I think these takeaways on his mindset on failure will really hit home with you too, like they did for me. So first off, we talk about reframe the L. Earlier, we talk about celebrate the W's. Well, we need to reframe the L's when we lose in life. So look at loss from a different perspective and find the lesson within it. And for me, I I could consider my old jobs as a failure. I could consider my old t-shirt company, Daydream Clothing, as a failure. I could look at 
my college football career as a failure, but every one of those things had some kind of learning lesson. I had to reframe that L and see it through a different lens to realize, man, there were some valuable lessons within there that have all played a part in shaping me to this person I became today. And episode 95, all about learning to love the crust. This is what this is about. Reframing the L, taking those hard times, those shitty, crusty times in life and finding the lesson within because that's truly shaping you to the person you're supposed to become. The next takeaway is all about understanding you're in control of your story. Failure all along the way is just another part of your story. You can share to inspire others. And there's going to be tons of failures in this book of your story. Okay, they're just chapters. But use that to your advantage. Use it in your story. Share it with the world. Be open. Be vulnerable. And you're giving other people, again, permission to be comfortable with their story so they can own it and share it and inspire others. Next, tell yourself you're an artist and believe it. Whether you're an artist, a designer, photographer, whatever it is, tell yourself and believe it. Speak your thoughts and beliefs into existence. For me, it took me a long time to embrace that I was an artist. I mentioned in in this segment that I was a closet artist and I had to accept it, embrace the adversity that came with it and just own it. This is me. This is my identity. I'm an artist. I'm a designer. I'm a creative. I, I... I have these creative genes in my DNA. It's who I am at my core, my soul. And I'm just going to own it from now on. I'm also a coach. I'm a creative coach who wants to help other people become the best versions of themselves. It may sound cheesy, but damn it, that's who I am and I'm going to embrace it. And this is other things I'm going to talk about next week. You know, we're getting super deep next week in episode 101, so stick with me. And finally, the last thing is leave a legacy. You're in control of your story and your story ends when you're dead, technically, you know, and we're all going to die. But what you do within your story, you have the ability to make an impact with your story far after it ends. So again, what's in it for other people? Own your story and focus on leaving a legacy behind. And that's what I'm doing right now for people to find my episodes far after I'm gone. If something happens to me or something that my son can be proud of. So thank you, Jason. You can connect and follow Propaganda at prop hip hop on instagram or check them out on spotify number 10 we made it this top tip is all about the definition of success and this one comes from alicia cologne so if you need a reality check about embracing your identity and finding your voice then you need to listen to episode 45 with expert paper crafting magician alicia cologne like the fragrance but it's not spelled that way she is isn't afraid to be vulnerable and bear the cracks in her armor as she tells her story of reclaiming her identity. This one really made me go do some internal reflecting and I had to write out my thoughts and my feelings and I followed the exercises that she gives you in this episode, especially if you trip up with the same things that we talk about here. Um, Something else you talked about was your definition of success and how many people have a skewed vision and definition of what success is. So what is success to you. Yeah. Success for me now is how well does my do align with my who? So like before, whenever I was creating content for, um, for me, whenever my, my who and all that stuff was really skewed, I was so focused on engagement and I was so focused on how many followers am I going to get? What features am I going to get? Um, like what clients, if, am I going to get a bigger client than, you know, last week or last month? And what ended up happening was I curtailed my content to be what I thought my followers would want. And, um, and so that was my, that was my success. Like, oh, I got more likes or I got more engagement or I got, you know, all these bigger and better things. And that is an endless tiring tunnel to chase down. So, but so now since my who and my do are aligned, I see success as is my content elevating the people? Meaning like, is, do I have value there? Am I teaching something? Um, am I trying to debunk a creative myth that people believe? Um, am I like pretty much just providing life giving like comments and this is how to do it. And this is how to get there. What's one word of advice you would give to Some kind of creative who's struggling on gaining the confidence at the start or persevering and sticking with it because they get so lost in comparison. You know, what would you tell that person? Your identity is not in what you do. So therefore, fail often, fail freely, 
learn and experiment and take your successes and each of those failures because there is one. Because it takes a lot of shitty work to stumble across your best work. Yeah, move through it. Alicia, my friends, she bears it all. It, she has an incredible story. She does incredible work. And she's just an open source to share her knowledge of what she knows. And what she knows is a lot in all aspects of life. And I, I, I truly appreciate her you know, sharing all these things that are probably really hard to talk about for her in the beginning. So here are some of the enlightening and heart-tugging takeaways I got from our conversation. First up, the who versus do. You know, and how well does your do align with your who? So first up, your who. The who is your identity and your priorities in life are all centered around this. The do, you know, what you do in life should align with your identity and your vision. But often we get so wrapped up in thinking that our do, what we do in life, defines our who, our self-worth. And I'm here to tell you that your identity is not defined by what you do. So your do does not define your who. This is a constant reminder. And the next thing we talk about is don't create for the masses. We mentioned this earlier with Eric Marinovich, but don't define your self-worth and your identity by your work. Your work does not define your worth. If you get some shitty engagement on something that you were so hyped up about, it's all right. Roll with it. Fuck it. It doesn't reflect on who you are as a human being, at, at your human soul, You know who you are, your identity. It doesn't matter. These vanity metrics do not matter. It does not change who you are. They do not define me. That's not what makes Scotty Russell, Scotty Russell. And they do not define you. And the final takeaway was create value. Again, this goes back to what Ben was saying. What type of value are you providing people with your due? And I think it's so important to think about what you're providing people. How can you make an impact on people with what you do? And that all ties into your vision and your identity of who you want to be as a person and what you stand for. Thank you so much, Alicia, for these incredible words of wisdom. I know they're going to make an impact on people who just heard them this time around for the first time. So check out her episode again at episode 45 for the complete story. Connect and follow along with her insane paper crafting artwork skills at Alicia Cologne on Instagram. So as I wrap things up, let's talk about this for a second. What's in it for you? Why should you care? Why do you listen? And what's in it for you for listening the next hundred episodes? I've mentioned this earlier, but next week I'm doing a super deep dive into this new focus direction I'm taking the show. If you didn't notice the opening intro hook about what the show is about, why it's for you is different. And I've written it out a million times to figure out what it is, but this is fuel for your mind and your creative grind. And I'm going to break that down next week, what it's about. But my overall intentions each week are to share with you the best of what I learned to help fuel your creative hustle and your grind. And that's what today's episode was all about. You know, I have a lot of the same burning questions and desires and struggle as you do. And I'm never going to sit up here on this platform, on this pedestal and bullshit you like I have it all figured out and I have, you know, all the answers because I don't. You know, I, I believe in transparency and being honest with you. And I think that's why you relate to me is because I don't sugarcoat shit. You know, I definitely try to be strategic on who I have on this show. I seek out experts of their craft who can articulate things and teach things far better than I can to help you and me break through these barriers that are holding us back. So the repeating patterns we discussed today that can help us break through these barriers at a rapid pace and speed up the timelines of our growth. You know, these, these themes of the episodes were the importance of self-initiated projects to unlock those opportunities, aka building doors, passion projects. Next, sharing your story and showing your true authentic self in your work. I think this is how you're going to attract the like-minded people in your tribe. It just takes one person at a time to build that engaged audience. Uh, next, give yourself permission to experiment and use failure as a tool to learn. Stop trying to create for the masses. If you're trying something new, you could be a pioneer of this total new wave of people loving your work. So give yourself permission to fail and experiment and use failure as that tool in your tool belt. And finally, 
avoid trying to find your self-worth and finding your identity in the performance of your work. Social media is a tool if you use it correctly, just like failure. And use it to experiment and fail. But at the end of the day, who you are as an individual and how you treat other people and how you show love and empathy and understanding and provide value to people, you know, that at the end of the day is what I'm going to define people by is their character. I don't give a shit about your work. If you're a good person, you know, we can be homies. All right. I believe in being a good person out of the root of anything, not even religion, just be a good person. And I think just continue to push your work as hard as you can. And you're going to get to that point where people identify with your work, but just don't ever let your self work be defined by that work and the engagement that comes with it. No matter where you are in your creative hustle, you're a rookie or a seasoned vet, there's always a next level we can unlock. You and I are far more than petty people pursuing popularity with pretty polished posts on Instagram. We're so much more than that. We can make an impact on this world, not only with our work, but more importantly, our story and voice. So the next hundred episodes are all about pursuing that best version of yourself while serving as many people as you can with your gift. And I'm stoked to have you along for the ride. Thanks so much for sharing this special milestone with me today. Here's to the next 100. We did it. While all my guests drop insane amounts of value, and that's why I have them on the show, you know, the, the top 10 tips today that I got were just ones that resonated with me most during this chapter of my life in the season that I'm in with my creative career. And it's really helping me figure out things in my head and distill my message and find my voice and, and win that inner battle that I think we all face each day, whatever inner demon, that inner critic that you have going on. This helps me win. That's why I packaged them up and delivered it to you. So I highly encourage you to go back and listen to each guest episode. And more importantly, I encourage you to reach out and connect with them and show some love and support if their words made an impact on you today. Again, I would love to know what you thought of this episode. Let's connect. Please share a screenshot of whatever podcast player you're listening to or whatever work you're working on at the same time with the podcast in the background. People do that. Connect with me at Perspective Podcast on Instagram. I would love to hear your thoughts. And if you want to celebrate along with the show, go get your hands on this limited run of merch celebrating this episode 100 and the new wave of brand identity I got going out there. Shout out to Amir Growcase of the Forefathers for helping me out with that. Again, take advantage of these collector mugs, limited screen printed tees and posters, and get yourself one of these enamel pens I got done through Grizzly Wheeler. Shop your little hearts away at perspective-collective.com slash shop and support the growth of this show. Moving on to this week's dose of inspiration. This one goes out to Travis Peitch or Peach on the Grams. Let me spell that for you. That's Travis, T-R-A-V-I-S, Peitch or Peach, P-I-E-T-S-C-H. I feel like this dude is a hidden gem in this community as his illustration and branding skills are impeccable. They're brilliant. They're mind-blowing. He has a knack for selecting jaw-dropping color palettes and textures. I highly recommend you check him out. Again, that's Travis Peitch on Instagram. And let's talk about the Facebook community while I got your attention. If you're out there and you feel all alone and you're desperately searching for accountability, community, a place to share your work, get feedback, collaborate with, you know, or get access to resources that'll elevate your creative game, then I encourage you to check out the Perspective Dash Collective Facebook group. We have a thriving family building right now. We would love to have you be a part of it. So again, hop on Facebook, search The Perspective Dash Collective to get involved with rad like-minded people such as yourself. Finally, will you do me a favor? If you're enjoying what you're hearing, you found value in the show, head over to Apple Podcasts, subscribe, and leave a ratings and review. Not only does it help me climb up the ranks of the design creativity field, but it allows me to give you some public love with this shout out, like this week's rating and review. This one's titled The Best Creative Podcast, and this one's by Kay Zumbach. They state, I've been listening to the podcast for a couple months now, and I seriously love every episode. The advice from Scotty and his guests is real with achievable action steps. The podcast makes artists, designers that I look up to real people. It's so great to hear that everyone starts in the same place and experiences the same struggles. Thank you for taking the time to leave that. I would love to read yours out if you're listening and on the fence about leaving one. So as I wrap things up, I need to give a huge thank you to first my podcast editor, Anya Brennan, for making this sound so good all the way from Ireland. 
And second, my executive assistant, we just decided on her new title today, Paige Garland, for all the help that she does for me. I could not do this without you two ladies. And a huge thanks goes out to Nick Jenkins of Beluga for all the dope theme music you hear on the show. Listen and support him at SoundCloud, Spotify, and Instagram at Bluka. That's B-L-O-O-K-A-H. And as you finish off your week strong, first, thank you for enjoying and celebrating this milestone with me. I want to continue to encourage you to keep showing up, keep putting in the work, and keep creating. You got this. You got this.